we welcome you to worship through and at Holy Cross Lutheran Church and School here in Wichita, Kansas. We know that these are trying times, and we pray God's blessings upon us as we pray together, as we do our mission and ministry together as well. Several announcements before we begin. First of all, the worship services in the coming weeks will not be held in person because of the coronavirus. What we'll be doing instead is taping our worship services and giving you an opportunity to join us in worship in your kitchens and living rooms at home as you see you have the opportunity. We'll be pre-recording both the Wednesday services and the Sunday and Saturday services so that they'll be available to you online as you found this service today. Communion opportunities will be provided this coming Sunday on March the 22nd. Please call the church office at 684-5201 to register for communion, to let us know that you'll be coming, to find out about times and exactly how we'll do that so that we keep everyone safe during those communion opportunities as well. Please remember to care for members especially the elderly, and care for their, your neighbors as well. If you need assistance in assisting them, let us know at the church office how we can do that. The church office, by the way, will remain open during our regular hours, so please contact us for any help or assistance or questions you may have. As we gather now for worship, we're reminded that through the passion of our Lord Jesus, the tightly timed tramp of soldiers' feet is heard again and again as Jesus is shuttled from place to place. Like the soldiers, we often march to the beat of this world rather than marching in tune with God's word and God's command. By God's grace, we march with the cross of Jesus leading us, in step with Jesus and with his word. As we begin our worship today, all of our songs will be from the Lutheran service book. We hope that you have one at home. If not, you may want to Google those words for the hymns as they come. We'll be singing verse 1 of hymn number 662, Onward Christian Soldiers. Let's join in singing. turn to God's precious word. The first lesson for our hearing this day is written for us by Paul in his letter to the Christians of Galatia. We read from Galatians chapter 5 beginning with verse 16. So I say live by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature for the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. The second lesson for our hearing is written in the Gospel of John. It's also the basis for this day's sermon meditation. We read from John chapter 18, beginning with verse 1. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was an olive grove, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the grove, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials with the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, Jesus asked them, Who is it you want? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he, Jesus answered. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, Put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup my father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him at first to Annas, who was the brother-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest this year. Here end the readings from God's precious word. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, especially in these troubled times, and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we gather this year, we listen to the sounds of Lent, the sounds of the Passion. So far, we've heard the ripping of cloth, a reminder to us that as the high priest, in mock horror, as Jesus told him that I am he, he tore his clothes. Also, the tearing of Jesus' purple robe off of his bloody back and the tearing of the temple curtain and the great message that the way to God was opened for us. Then the next week we heard... Ah, the clinking of coins, those 30 coins that they clinked into Judas's hand. And then the clinking coins that were thrown into the temple as Judas felt remorse but did not repent. And then that reminder that we are redeemed not with gold or silver, but with the holy, precious blood of Jesus. Just last week we heard <laughs> the crying tears. The crying tears that we heard Jesus weeping at Lazarus' tomb, Jesus weeping in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus weeping on the cross because of all the pain that was there. Yes, lots of tears. This week we heard lots of tears because the coronavirus has canceled many different things. But the tears of our Lord and Savior Jesus, where he gives us that promise that in eternal life in heaven and with that peace in him, all tears will be wiped away. This week, this week as we continue these sounds of the passion, we hear...
the cadence tramping of soldiers' feet, the tramping of feet that we hear numerous times in this reading from John chapter 8, 18, and we hear about many times as Jesus was tramped from place to place. It's amazing how many times that Jesus was moved in that very early morning hours, late Thursday night, very early Friday morning, the wee hours of the morning. Now, Jesus had been with his disciples, and of course, he had taken them from the upper room and taken them out to Gethsemane. And then the soldiers came at Gethsemane and tramped Jesus back into the city of Jerusalem, took him to Annas, first of all, and then to Caiaphas, and then to Pilate. And then Pilate decided he'd take him to Herod, and then Herod back again, and then Pilate finally sending him to Gethsemane. Jesus knew about all of this tramping. Jesus knew that he would walk those ways. He had told his disciples that exactly what was going to be happening to him, and in that garden of Gethsemane, he even prayed, Lord, if it be possible, not my will, but your will be done, and he knew it was the Father's will that he would tramp those times. So Jesus, he is in the garden. <clears throat> just as he asked his disciples to watch and pray, and Jesus is praying three times and finding uh, Peter and the other disciples asleep and so on, but we hear then this tramping of the soldiers' feet. Ah, the Jewish authorities, they didn't want to let this opportunity get by them, and so they got this Roman soldiers to come, and they came out with torches and with, with knives and with all kinds of things so that they would make sure that Jesus would not get away. <laughs> but Jesus knew what was going to happen. Jesus was totally in charge. The tramping of feet did not stop his will and what he came for. How fascinating it is that John tells us that when those soldiers came tramping out, Jesus goes out and meets them. And he says, who are you looking for? Well, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus says, I am he, and the soldiers and all fall backward. Again, Jesus says, who are you looking for? And Jesus says, and they say, Jesus of Nazareth, I am he, and again. Jesus didn't run away. Jesus knew the walk that he needed to walk. And so he walked willingly with his disciples. And he walked willingly with the soldiers. Well, as the soldiers then had this, somewhat chaos broke out. Because then Peter whips out his sword and he whacks off Malchus' ear. But Jesus is in total control. Jesus says to Peter, put your sword away, and he heals Malchus's ear, and he tries to calm things down. But what happens is the disciples don't get it. And instead of marching feet of soldiers, we hear the running away. The running away of all the disciples. They're running for their lives and leaving Jesus alone just like he told them. Then, the soldiers tromp and march Jesus to Pilate. Finally, after Caiaphas and Annas and so on, they march him to Pilate. And Pilate then kind of gets out of step. He gets out of step because Pilate really wants to release Jesus. At least three times, if not more, Pilate says, he's innocent, he's innocent, he's innocent. But the tramping of feet continue on in spite of what Pilate tries to do. Pilate decides, oh good, he's from Galilee. I'll send him over to Herod. They mistreat Jesus, put a purple robe on him and tramp him back to Pilate. Pilate, still trying to release Jesus, suggests, well, maybe Barabbas. People, you can have that choice. No, we want Jesus, we want Jesus. Then Pilate said, oh, well, then I will have him punished. And the soldiers in March marched Jesus into their barracks, but then all of their discipline breaks down, and they brutally beat him. They brutally mistreat him. They place a crown of thorns upon him. They bloody him. They bring him back to Pilate. 
Pilate then gives him to the people. Here is the man. And the people say, crucify him. Pilate still doesn't want to do it, and yet he turns Jesus over to them. It has to be because Jesus has to walk this way to the cross. And so Jesus, then the tramping of soldiers' feet, has to carry his own cross. Hup, two, three, four. Hup, two, three, four. Hup, two, halt. The tramping of feet had to halt because Jesus broke down underneath that cross. And the soldiers had Simon from Cyrene then carry that cross all the way then to Calvary. And that marching stopped at Calvary where they crucified Jesus and placed him upon the cross. But Jesus, still in step with his heavenly Father, still in step, this crucifixion was so different from all other crucifixions. Rather than crying out in pain and curses and all kinds of things that most of the time the soldiers would have heard, what do they hear from Jesus? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. John, here's your mother. Mother, here's your son. Jesus caring so much about his mother and John. The thief on the cross. Today you will be with me in paradise. Totally different kind of a walk than anyone else had ever done. And then his declaration. It is finished. How Jesus knew that his walk, the walk that he had began at his birth in Bethlehem, in his ministry to his people, at his crucifixion and death, he knew that that punishment for sin was finished and that in three days he would rise again and we would have eternal life with him. Oh, how significant it is that Jesus walked the way of his heavenly Father. And he did that to forgive those of us who walk to the beat of a different drummer. It's so easy to walk the way of the world. It's so easy to follow the crowd, to follow the marching of the whole things of even our sinful nature that's there. How God would lead us away from that broad path to the narrow path that he gives to us. The narrow path of marching with Jesus. Onward Christian soldiers as we march with Jesus. And how important it is that that perfect walk of Jesus was for us because of our imperfect walking. The scriptures speak to us about because now we have the Spirit of God, we are to be in step with the Spirit, to live according to the Spirit. Jesus fills us and, and has us to do that. King David, the psalmist, he would write, "'Teach me your way, O Lord.'" and I will walk in your ways. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. An undivided heart. We have a divided heart. We want to walk with Jesus. We want to do the things that Jesus would have us to do, but because of our sinful nature, we do not. So we turn to our Lord and Savior Jesus, and we look to him. Chief of sinners though I be, I should have been the one those soldiers were marching to the cross. You should have been the one that the soldiers were marching to that cross. But chief of sinners though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me. Oh yes, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ cleans us and helps us as we walk according to the Spirit. And so we have this, this wonderful message from John, uh, from the Apostle Paul, as he writes to us, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us walk by the Spirit. The Apostle Paul will also write, we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus to do the good works that God prepared beforehand, that we may walk in them. Walking with Jesus. What a privilege we have tramping feet, walking feet, so that we might march in step with the Spirit and be onward Christian soldiers marching as to war. What opportunities we have each and every day, whether there's a coronavirus going on or whatever it might be, 
to walk with our Lord and Savior Jesus. May the peace of God that passes all our understanding always keep our hearts and our minds centered in Christ Jesus, walking with him unto life everlasting. Amen. During these days of uncertainty, we know that we can frequently come to our Lord in prayer. We bring it all to him, knowing that he listens and he's attentive to our needs and our requests. We invite you during this season also to recognize that God blesses us in every way. God blesses us with all that we have. We encourage you to be faithful in your offerings as a way to say thank you to God for all his blessings and for the ministry and the work of your church to continue in the days to come. If you give electronically, that will continue. If you don't do so and would like to bring offerings by the church office, you're welcome to do that as well. Please contact us for how you might give to the Lord in thanksgiving for all he gives to you. We also invite your prayer requests. We don't have a way to receive those as we normally do, so please again contact the church office with your prayer requests so that we can include them in these recorded services and also so that our staff can continue to pray for you during the coming days. So let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for tramping feet. We ask, Lord, that as we hear the soldiers' feet, you would remind us that so often we walk in opposition to your word, your will, and your way. Help us, O Lord, to follow you, to march behind the cross, to march with the cross into our sin-darkened world. Give us strength and courage, peace and joy in these days, and help us to be an example to those around us. Gracious and merciful Father, we confess that we often march to the beat of our own drum rather than your clear word. Strengthen our faith and give us hope. Forgive us for not walking in your ways. Redeeming Savior Jesus, we turn to you, giving you thanks for boldly facing the marching of the soldiers and their leading. They're leading you before those who condemned you. Give us boldness and the assurance that you walk with us through our daily journeys all our life long. Holy Spirit, we turn to you who never tires in inviting us to return, praying that you teach us your way so that we will walk in your truth. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are ill and in need of your helpful healing hand. Be with Bruce Ball, who was hospitalized. Be with those who have cancer and chronic illness and grant them your presence, health, and healing. We ask your blessing on Irene Wagner, who has recently had kidney and lung issues, and we pray that you would give her a favorable outcome. Be with Nancy Horvath also for complete and speedy recovery after triple bypass heart surgery. Gracious Father, be with us during these days of pandemic. We pray that you would help us to be ambassadors of your gospel in our community, in our country, and world. We pray according to your gracious will that you would relieve us from this distress, that you would grant help and health and healing to those worldwide who need it. Give us peace and patience, wisdom and courage that we might trust you until your will is done. Help us, O Lord, to be examples to those around us as Christians living out your word and way. Father, into your hands we commit all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy as revealed to us in your passion. We pray it confidently in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We conclude our worship this day by joining in the hymn, Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus. We sing verse 1 of hymn number 685, Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus. Finally, a reminder that the weekend services will again be pre-recorded and be available for you. We hope that you'll join us as you have the opportunity through the week to listen to God's precious word. We would remind you that next Wednesday we'll be gathering with the crowing of the rooster, a reading from Luke chapter 22. And be above all reminded that the Lord is with us during these days of anxiety. Remember what God tells us in Romans 8, 28. For we know that in all things, God works together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. We love him and are called according to his purpose. He will work through this and every situation to his glory and to our good. And in that, we have confidence. God bless you until we join together again for worship. In his name, amen.